Hello, welcome to the Connecticut Creative Collaborative. I'm Marianne Cruz, business strategist and coach and co-founder of C3 Collaborative. And I'm John Jaramillo, leadership coach and consultant and founder of CoachItOut.com. And in today's episode, we're actually going to talk about us as well as why we started this series and what it's all about. Now, the Connecticut Creative Collaborative was a series we created because we were curious and we wanted to learn about the creatives and the people that are innovative in our community, in our state, from wherever, from our networks that we can find. And the way that we came across this project is that we had collaborated, Marianne and I, in the past, and we're both, by the nature of our work, that we coach people very curious and just seeking out the best information and path forward for whoever we work with. So we wanted to work on something, and originally we thought about doing a newsletter, but at the same time, um, there was just something that was less urgent with a newsletter. We wanted to kind of provide a face, provide a, a voice, and kind of the voice of whoever we could extract information from. We learned that our, our networks overlinked, so we wanted to do that and just learn from the people in our networks, and we thought that the best way to do that is kind of, again, put that face to a name, and that name to a specialization. So now Marianne's going to go a little bit into herself, her career, and her background, just so you get a sense of where she's coming from when she comes to this project. So I am Marianne Cruz, business strategist and coach. Um, I actually work with creatives, which is why um, I was so interested in doing this with John. So I am a coach for creatives, and I help them gain clarity and momentum momentum through action. And so I've been helping entrepreneurs actually for 20 plus years. In my 20s, I started working for an organization that helped businesses expand, relocate, and start um, through Connecticut. And I instantly fell in love with being able to understand what their challenges were, as well as being able to provide resources and tools for them. And um, so after graduating from CCSU with a degree in hospitality and tourism, I thought that I was going to travel the world. And that actually did not happen. Um, <laughs> what happened and the journey that I started was that of um, my career. So I basically welcomed every opportunity that I've had um, from accounting to finance, marketing, sales. Um, B2B IT specialist, you name it, when it comes to business operations, I've done it all for 20 plus years. And um, creatives have just naturally gravitated to me recently because while they're passionate, they need um, some guidance with their foundation and fundamentals, and that's where I come in. And, and for my part, I'm a leadership coach in the Hartford area. Um, recently it has gone beyond that just because of the nature of everything that's going on right now and, and everybody kind of going online. Uh, I've taken on clients outside the Hartford area. For my part, my background, I had an undergraduate in marketing, a master's in organizational psychology, an MBA, and a mediation certificate. And as I was going through those things, it was kind of like this mishmash where at the end of one, I would kind of look around to see what was next. And it all looks very random, but at the same time, as I fell into the leadership coaching, uh, I think maybe halfway through my MBA, I just realized I was getting questions from friends as to what my degrees were, uh, especially organizational psychology. So I would answer questions. They would have more questions, would want to sit down. Then they'd say they knew somebody else who had questions. So I kind of just rounded out my education in all these areas. So that led to leadership coaching. And I'm grateful for it. I mean, I'm a late bloomer, but there's nothing wrong with that. And then at the same time, my specialty has been, like Marianne has said, at a certain point, you fall into a certain direction. Um, so lately, it has been working with people that are just coming into new positions. So whether it's themselves contracting with me or their organizations, um, whoever it is that's, that's contracting me sees the potential of that person in the next position, but there's just something about refining what that person knows. And it's not an indication of that person's less worth or anything like that. It's just kind of getting better. So that's my specialty. Um, as of late. And then how I play into this conversation with creatives is the way that I look at leadership coaching. So leadership coaching, depending on the leader, you, the leadership coach that you speak to, um, everybody handles it differently. Marianne can probably attest to the fact that business coaches and strategists 
approach their work differently. I mean, that's what makes them either successful or not is how they set themselves apart. For my part, the way that I look at leadership coaching is always about designing it, looking at your past and figuring out what you can draw forward. And a lot of that takes creative thinking. It's not that you're creating it from the ground up, but you're being creative about how you can fashion things from your past to move forward. So now Marianne um, can go into a, a little about what the series will be and where we're going to take it. Take it. So, so on a weekly basis, we'll be meeting with creatives um, and taking some time to understand what they do um, in their profession, but also what their creative process is and essentially understand their why behind, you know, who they are and how they got there. Yeah, Marianne, you and I both are just very, we're very curious people. So um, it's very, we really want to dig in and see. It's not so much finding out how they got into their career steps, but before that, it's about what made that person a creative, what was it from their past, whether it's their family, their history, that kind of drove them in that direction. Some people, to, to some people may come naturally, other people it's trial and error. Whatever it is, with us having a conversation with them, someone feels that that conversation is worth the time. So we want to figure what it is that got them to that point. And let's talk about now why you and I are drawn into that creative space. We've talked about that our work has been in that space, that we've ended up in that space. But then the way we talk about the people we want to talk to, how they were drawn into their creative space, what is it that draws us to that space? What is it that draws us to the creatives, the innovators? Why are we curious about that? I mean, for your part, what do you think it is about your mind that helps you gravitate towards them and what they do? So I love Hot seat. Hot seat. See, I love creatives. Um, I find them to be passionate about what they do. And they're always, you know, they look at things differently. Um, they're usually very empathetic. And they're constantly giving, right? It just comes naturally to them. So they're, they're very humble people. And so it hasn't been a matter of me searching for them. It's been a matter of I understand them. I'm not a creative. Um, however, I do have the business operations experience that so many of them need. Um, just because, you know, they're, they're visionaries, they're innovators, they're big picture, whereas I'm constantly getting into the action steps and the details. So gotcha. it's a matter of, you know, being able to just give them a good balance. And I think where you and I, even though our businesses are different, I think where you and I overlap is that ability to see in others maybe what they don't see in themselves, giving them the opportunity to learn about themselves, refine themselves, express themselves, all for their own betterment. But I think it takes a keen eye to see that in people. From my part, in terms of creatives, um, this all hit me within like the last year, really. I mean, I'd been leadership coaching for... Uh, a couple of years, but it wasn't until last year where I was really drawn to kind of learn about people, learn about what they can create. Um, I think it was when I hit a new level of networking where it's not so much what can someone do for me, but what you can learn from other people and what you can compliment of other people. Um, and I've just learned, I've seen it, I'm assuming it's all over the country, obviously, but in the Hartford community, there's just a lot of people that are just they want to build up this area. They want to build up this community. There's so many skills that they can put out there. Everybody wants to be so collaborative that there's just so much to learn. So to me, I've always been curious about people. I've always been an introvert. Some people don't believe that because I can get on you know, camera like this. But um, I do this. I have the energy to do this because I'm curious as all hell is what it is in all honesty. So um, I'm just always curious what people can do. You know what I mean? I, I don't think... I think a lot of us leave too much on the table. I've seen it with my clients. They don't tap into the best of themselves. And again, it takes some creativity to think about your past and what you can bring forward. So that's, that's what I see in creatives. And one caveat that I want to put out there for anybody watching this or listening to this um, is that creative, we have different definitions. So you have the, the traditional creatives, which are the artists, the painters, uh, writers, um, and then you have creatives that are outside of that area. So they're not traditional in that scope. They may be somebody 
I mean, who can you think of that's not traditionally a creative? Um, maybe you're stereotyping, but maybe some, somebody like a construction worker because it's very, here's the plan, this is what we have to do. But in the, in the span of their work, there are going to be times where they can refine what they're doing, where they need to get creative about what they're doing. So it's that kind of mindset. How do you create something? How do you expand something? How do you innovate and, and make it better? So creative... I mean, you speak to that, Marianne. It doesn't have to be just that traditional sense of, you know, the painter, the writer, the, the whatever you may have, the sculptor, but it may be somebody outside of those industries. Well, and I feel like for each person, um, they might not even know or classify themselves as a creative, as you, you touched upon. Um, yeah. Other coaches can be creative oh, yeah. in the yeah. way that yeah. they develop their method or their process. Yes. Um, exactly. I constantly think of, you know, food <laughs> as someone who's... I creative. always think of food. I always think of food. Okay. Yeah. yeah um, you're right. But, you know, even even teachers, professors, just, again, think of those people that are making an impact, that are thinking out, outside of the box, um, yeah. who are bringing something new that you're like, okay, this is, this is innovative. This is unique. I would have never put those two things together, yet it yeah. functions. And I'm not going to lie, I'm one of these people where I understand it, I know it, but when somebody thinks, says think outside the box, sometimes it can be overkill. So what I tell people is if you hear a cliche like think outside the box, whoever says it, make sure they, they tell you why they think, they think that way. So we say thinking outside the box. Now we want to show people what, that, what really goes into that. So that's, that's important that it's stepping outside of your comfort zone, what you know, what's locked in, stepping outside of that script and seeing what's, what's possible out there. So the way we're going to do this with the series is we're going to start with our network. Some of it overlaps, some of it doesn't. So we'll bring in people from our networks, but we would love if people would see this program, see the series, see the value in it, and then kind of think about Again, thinking outside of that box, not just the artists, the sculptors, the chefs, the foodies, but anybody else that kind of is creative, they bring a new flair to what it is they do. Um, Marianne, is there anything that I'm missing in terms of, of what we can expect or what we would want for the people that we would want to talk to? No, I would just say, um, chances are you know someone that is a creative and they may not classify themselves as such, so please um, feel free to, you know, bring their information forward to us and we'll be able to, to make that connection. Um, yeah. You know, some of them may need a little bit convincing, but that's what we're here for. Oh, I'll, I'll try to convince anybody. But <laughs> um, and I guarantee I guarantee that anybody watching this, once they're done watching it, they'll kind of take a new look at the way that they work the way that their colleagues work, um, anyone around them. So hopefully just based on this conversation, they can get a new perspective on what they see in their circles around them. So, I mean, I think that pretty much wraps up what we want to cover for this series, kind of as an introduction, Marianne. If, if there's anything that I've missed, please let me know. No, that's it. All right. So to learn more about us or to reach out to us with uh, any suggestions, um, recommendations, anything, any comments at all, you'll see the information pop up to our websites and our contact information. Until then, um, we can't we can't wait to see what comes out of this. And um, I thank you so much for listening and watching. Marianne, thank you for the invitation to do this with you. Thank you. I, I can't right. wait to see what comes out of this as well. It's going to be great. Awesome.